a traveling man Made a lot of stops All over the world Good evening, and welcome to this week's edition of What's So Funny, the show that talks about the funny with the people who make it happen. Our guest this week is making his third appearance on the program. He's a comedian, entertainer, and you know what? A traveling man. We have Mr. Glenn Wall, and of course, your host, the one, the only, Guy McPherson. Welcome back, Guy. Thanks, Sam. Good good job last week with Nestor Pister. A real legend. I listened from home, and I yeah. uh, really enjoyed that. I'm, I'm glad. Glenn was probably a big fan of Nestor Pister back in the day. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, were you? <laughs> did, he, did he do it in his own voice? No. Or did he maintain the pretense of oh, the Ukrainian? What pretense? <laughs> he has an accent. The whole does hour. He? Oh, the whole hour. Yeah. <laughs> we'll but go does with he that. in real life? No, he doesn't. No. But he and he kept it up the whole hour. Yes, it's <laughs> awesome. It was awesome. I, I uh, that was uh, I asked right away. So how do you want us to refer to you? He's like it doesn't matter. And then I refer to him by his name, and he's still doing the accent. I'm like, well, I guess it's Nestor. I'm fucked. <laughs> oh, pardon my language. Hey, that's all right. Well, I'm gonna keep my uh, Canadian accent up the whole time. <laughs> <laughs> Good. You've maintained it through all your travels. Not Mr. necessarily. Traveling men. Oh, no, no. Do you, no, do you ever slips. affect, uh, or, or not affect, I find that my friends who've gone to England for, you know, six months come back with a bit of an accent. I have an English accent, um, but not when I'm in Canada. Because I, then I come back here and I, and I start talking <laughs> like everyone else. Hey. Uh, <laughs> so, but it's, it, like, the English don't accept me as their own, but if no, I, I come back they. here... no. No, uh, that's what I believe. That's what the referendum was about. <laughs> um, uh, the, yeah, so if I'm over there, um, the yeah, they they don't see it as English. But if I come back over here when I'm around for a few weeks, people think I'm Irish. Is that it? Yeah, and it's not just the certain words that are different. It's actually you have a little bit of a lilt. I'm very drunk most of the time. <laughs> okay, well, that, that explains it, yeah. Still? Cheap shot to the Irish. Take that, you blarney stones. Uh, yeah, but you really are a traveling man. How many countries have you been to, do you know? Uh, you must keep track. Uh, yeah, I think it was 70 the last oh, time right. I looked. Sam, did you know there were 70 countries? Yes. You did? Yeah, there's like over, you know, 50. Over 50. Like 200 or so. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I thought it was going to be, like, uh, more. I, yeah. I, I thought I would turn. Um, but I, I have not been to much of South and Central America. So oh, there's yeah. a, whole, uh, a whole slew of them. And some of them are very skinny. So um, <laughs> the, Those countries. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. All the people, too, I imagine. There's some skinny ones. But. Like Chile. Yeah, that's the one I was thinking of. Yeah. yeah. So you can fill a lot of countries if you do it like that, if you do it in strips. Uh, so would you go, are you, any uh, yearning to visit South America and perform? Uh, there was talk of it, but the, um, I'm not so much a traveling man anymore. Oh. I've, got, uh, I've got a little uh, little one now. and um, Two? Two-year-old? Two-year, yeah, just the other day. Wow. Turned two. Took him... Uh, yeah, it's kind of a sad birthday party. He doesn't know anybody. So. <laughs> no friends. Well, that's all right. Yeah, yeah. We took you, him. You probably to, could have even bypassed the birthday party. He wouldn't have known. We should have, in the end, I thought, because of like you know, it was the classic, you know, play with the box more, and <laughs> you know, the car ride is where he really enjoyed it. But we took him to like uh, this place that was supposed to be. Um, it's a, it's like a a place where gymnasts train and divers train. It's got all these trampolines, and they've got for one hour of the day it's the toddlers' rumpus hour where oh, cool. you pay a well, you had to pay like forty bucks for insurance purposes, and that's a one time fee. But you know, I'd like to see the papers that they, you know, they I don't think anything got filed. It was just a, <laughs> all right. So they let you in there, and they've got a ball. They've got a foam pit. They've got yeah. these cube foam things, um, to which I jumped in and almost got stuck. Like, <laughs> it was really bad. Like, I, was, I, I had to use a lot of my inner strength to get out of the thing. <laughs> 
There's and nothing then, to grab onto. There's <laughs> nothing to grab onto, and it really is like it's it's anxiety causing. But it, I, I don't. It's it's a bit of a money grab because there's all these trampolines, but of course they're like like high end Olympic trampolines, so they're like the kids are not allowed on the trampoline. <laughs> like why would you? Why would you do have that? a thing where you let? And then there was a bouncy castle. But uh, they took it down halfway through because they had uh, special needs people in the hour after. And apparently the day before, they had gotten really excited by the bouncy castle. <laughs> when, like, they show up for their thing, and it went down, and they spent the whole day crying, like, oh, put, the, <laughs> put the bouncy castle back up, to which I would say, well, leave the bouncy castle yeah. up if that's what they want. But... Uh, so yeah, they they took it down halfway through the session, to wow. which made my son cry. And I was just so like, they don't care about uh, no needs children. No, no, no. They can no. cry. Yeah, yeah. Worst birthday party ever. But it's it only a second bad. one. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, and luckily, it was, you know, I never. I but I, I always thought I should just wrap up a cardboard box. Yeah. Try that next time. Yeah. And just get really excited. Go, oh, you got a cardboard box. Mm. Well, and I mean, I tried, it, I tried it last Christmas with his mother. And <laughs> I didn't. Uh, when you were with us, last with us, 2015. First time was 2011. Last time, 2015. I remember Glenwell has moved back to the lower mainland. Yeah. And then, of course, we never saw you. And you didn't. No, well, I did for a bit, but then that's how I, I met um, I met this young lady um, via the internet. It's been a it's oh. been a whirlwind. Uh, from here? No, no, she was from uh, England. This was the great thing about you if you're dating on the internet. It doesn't matter what country the person's from. You're gonna you can meet them. Exactly. Right. Yeah, hey, I'll meet you for a coffee. Where are you in the world? It doesn't well, matter. It's a, sort of an amazing story. Um, she. It was her best friend uh, tweeted to me on my wife's birthday. Said it's my it's my best friend's birthday. Would you say happy birthday to her? She's your biggest fan, and uh, I declined the option because uh, it's you know you don't want <laughs> to you know just do. And then I looked at her pictures and I was like, well, well, maybe it is a happy birthday for uh, Alex. And uh, I tweeted back. Um, Happy birthday. And then her best friend persisted and said, you know, you should marry Alex because she's... Um, Just go straight to marry. Yeah, well, she was... She wasn't... I, I don't think it was a legitimate proposal guy. <laughs> <laughs> she... Uh, it was a, it was a joking thing. And I said, well, I I wouldn't wish that on anybody, especially my biggest fan. And we, <laughs> we joked back and forth. And uh, But I still didn't want to be seen as like a dirty individual just like once if somebody comes onto your twitter you're like <laughs> yeah. so um i uh in in a spirit of playfulness i tweeted uh well just what every dirty girl wants on her birthday here's a dick pic for you and that was a picture of richard burton <laughs> uh, visual pun yeah and it was only years later that um my wife uh, said, "Just they like just flat out admitted that neither of them knew who Richard Burton was, <laughs> <laughs> and they didn't know well, who is this man that you're sending a picture of." <laughs> they just assumed his name that is Dick. It was a picture of a guy who was a dick. And I was like, <laughs> "You know what? It, it was. It was. You did get that correct. It works. Yeah." Yeah. So, yes, because you haven't said, but she is uh, a little younger than you. Yes. So she wouldn't get the reference. Richard That's Martin. right. Yes. Yeah, she's yeah. only 32. She's 27. She was 27 in the act up until um, a few months ago when, because I kept, kept adjusting my age to have it match my reality, but I kept hers at 27 and I asked her about it. And she was very happy that I did. <laughs> so, oh, I see, yeah. yeah, she was like, "That's fine." But and now all of a sudden, she's had several birthdays in quick succession. Yeah, yeah, she's thirty. She's thirty-one in the show now too, because twenty-seven and forty-five is. Yeah, I mean, it, it's weird. It's getting people are very judgmental about um, 
age gaps. In, they are, uh, especially when the male is the older. Mm. Well, it, it's actually just judgmental about people's sexuality. If you if you want to boil it down to that to that thing, like it's think. so funny. Yeah. It's so funny how everybody's like, hey, you know, you can't judge anybody for what they do. That that is their business, except this, and we'll all, <laughs> you know. yeah. Yeah, what? Well, yeah, I, I, and it's no, only it's yeah. only fourteen years. What is it? The difference? Oh, uh, twelve? Uh, 13? No, she's thirty-two now. So yeah, thirteen, 13 yeah, yeah. years. It's not. It's not the worst. My grandparents. You know how old the difference was there? No, guy, I don't. Thirty years. What? <laughs> Thirty-year difference. Wow. Thank you very much. Wow. Yeah, and there's they had, a story behind that. There, I bet. <laughs> there must be. I don't know it. <laughs> uh, yeah, that's the only thing he's allowed to know about them. <laughs> Grandpa in jail, all you need to know is that there's a 30-year difference between your grandfather and your grandmother, and that's why you never met him. I believe uh, when when they got married, it was about 60 years old and 30. Whoa, yeah. whoa, whoa. And so it was like a different she, time. She was, yeah, of course. Obviously. And, and she, you <laughs> it know, didn't she, happen in the future. She wasn't 15. <laughs> you know, she's yeah, a 30-year-old 30 30 old woman. <laughs> Yeah, she can make so, her own yeah. decisions. Yeah, was, but, it, I mean, was it a remote farming community? I don't know where it was. Toronto. Well, yeah, well, it was Winnipeg. Winnipeg. Oh, gross. Yeah, uh, yeah. Um, you do what you have to do in Winnipeg. <laughs> <laughs> it was that, or go see the Jets play. Bing, bang, boom. I wonder what it. the uh, reference points were then that my grandmother wouldn't have known. <laughs> you know, it would have been in some. Old prime minister or something? Like yeah, that. yeah. Harpo Marx. No, <laughs> prime minister Harpo Marx. <laughs> I'm just trying to think of her. It was Chico. Timing. It was Chico. Come on. Well, no, just like, yeah, like it was too hip for the room. <laughs> <laughs> but so, Winnipeg is where hmm. uh, Charlie Chaplin, um, or uh, Groucho Marx f um, first heard Charlie Chaplin on stage. Oh, really? Yeah, and he's heard him through the wall of a theater and said, we are not the funniest people in North America anymore. The Marx Brothers are not. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Oh, wow. In Winnipeg, I had no idea. Yeah. And they had them both in, uh, in yeah. town at the same time. Great, great bit of booking. <laughs> <laughs> I can't remember how they all ended up in Winnipeg at the same time, but I'm sure it only lasted a night. It wasn't like over a three-year course of their life. They were both living in Winnipeg. Right. It was, it was the old vaudeville circuit. Uh, so your wife is British. She is. And you said, let's go back to Vancouver or area and uh, raise a child. She said, yay. Not, not particularly like that. Um, no, I because I still had my place here, and we were going to sell it uh, and buy a house in um, England. And then she thought, well, why don't we come back for a year and uh, we can, uh, you know, because we don't because we, we were renting in England, so mm -hmm. it was always just going to be a year. But I sort of thought, well, maybe she get back here and like it. But nope. <laughs> I've already booked our flights. So. Oh, so you're going? We're gone. You're We're not going to stay here. You are going to be a traveling man. No, I'm going back to England. Well, we'll see. We'll see what happens with Brexit. I don't have to move, but I have to move. You out had your Surrey. own personal Brexit but, leaving. Well, yeah, I don't know. Canada's not done well in the in the impress my wife fronts. <laughs> oh, really? Yeah. It, you know, it just takes some time. No. It happened. Well, you're in she, Surrey too. Well, it was happening in um, Vanderhoof. The first one, uh, I went off to do the gig, and she stayed in the hotel room with my with my young son, and uh, some of the other patrons of the hotel did the like light knock on the door, um, just checking to see if anyone's in there, mm. kind of deal. And she's peeping through the eye hole and. She didn't help herself because she, she loves true crime podcasts. Yeah. And she's now on the highway of tears and two people are <laughs> two people are trying to break into the room, sort of. Gently, so she called <laughs> politely, me. Politely, Canadian way. Yeah. She called me at the the gig. So I had like a, I had it set up that we, my phone was in the hands of uh, one of the other acts. And I said, if you call this phone, I will wrap up the show and I will come back to the hotel uh, immediately. Uh, if those guys come back, because we, I called, I called the front desk, and 
God bless them. They were like as I talked to the owners earlier. They they were very newly from South Korea, and um, the late I was like, uh, there's I, I'm the comedian. Uh, there's two people trying to break into my wife's my the room, and my wife's in there, and she's like, no. The comedian's gone, and she didn't say it <laughs> that legibly, <laughs> but no. it was. Uh, so yeah, I had, um, and luckily they ne- they never came back. But th- there was a soft attempt mm. on. Uh, the, well, we don't know what they wanted, but um, and then in Surrey, uh, not two weeks later, she was crossing at a crosswalk with the lights, like she turned the the flashing lights, and mm-hmm. to. Uh, Dudes waited for her to be in the middle of the road and gunned the engine and tried to run her down. Ended up in the wrong lane and everything. And that's that's a hard Good attempt Lord. on her life. So. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. After. So go back to England where there's no crime. Yeah. Well, none like that. Like, oh, come on. Not... There's crime like that everywhere. <laughs> she just got unlucky. Wow. Uh, yeah. I don't know. You get to att- Like, there's no. You can't. I don't know. It's like having a friend with a issue like you know if, if they do it twice you, you can't like go but you gotta see the other side of them <laughs> yeah like, <laughs> twice in two weeks and like she just got here it was oh, the worst man. it was the worst Dude, possible time so, so. so how long have you been here back uh about do we got back in august late in august, august so. and you're leaving in the next July. summer July and to its, where do you live, live in England? Will it be her hometown or because you've been over there so much? Uh, yeah, well, July we're gonna go back. She's her parents live in France now, so she'll go stay with them. I'm gonna do a European tour, like uh, of course you are. Yeah, and then that'll be cooking up for Edinburgh. So it'll be Edinburgh for a month, and then we'll uh, we'll decide from there. But it's looking like Sudbury. It's a little. Um, City, it's kind of kind of commuter belt, but it's far enough that not not many people commute to <clears> London. So yeah. it's it's good for her. She's cause she's a flight attendant and she works at a Stansted, uh, and uh, I can live anywhere. So hmm. Sudbury, Surrey, England steals all our names. <laughs> <clears throat> I imagine you, uh, all the hard living that you've done, the life that you've lived. And you and the comedians you've seen, you love them. <coughs> um, then they have kids. Invariably, you got to talk about your kids because yeah. oh, most of my acts about my kids. And I wonder when you were younger, seeing comedians that you had liked turn to this, were you going, "Why are you doing this?" Or yeah, yeah no, I never. I always thought uh, funny was funny, and yeah, the funny one thing, funny, yeah. the one thing I like about it now is. Um, a lot more people understand what I'm talking about. Like, you know, mm-hmm. I don't. I don't think subject matter shows the talent to the comedian, and especially if it's if it's a well worn subject matter. If somebody's coming up with a new angle, you actually deserve more kudos. Um, and it, if you if you're good at writing about, um, you know, partying and and staying up all night, well, you, you'd be. <laughs> it's it's yeah. It's it's not. It's not what you're writing about. It's how you're writing about it. Yeah. I, I told um, Erwin Barker when he was here that uh, through him and seeing his his material on airports and pilots and all this, that was great. But the it wasn't groundbreaking subject matter, right? Because all subject, all comedians talk about this. But I said, this is where I believe that – there's no such thing as hack material, only hack comics. Yeah. Well, so, I you know, concur. like you can you can talk about uh, party and, and if you're funny, you're funny. Or you're talking yeah. about your kids. Whatever it is, my and voice. Soon after you told him that, he died. So you killed him. <laughs> you killed him with <laughs> Killed him with love. Yeah. yeah. Uh, if you if love could kill you, he would be dead from the um, from the appreciation of all the comedians. <laughs> Read that, will you? Well, well, I cough. Okay, this is blank. Oh, <laughs> this is. Good. I assume you want me to say Glenn Wool, and you're listening to What's So Funny on CFOR 100.5 FM, Vancouver Co-op Radio.
I love the voice. A little uh, dyslexic? Wolfman Are Jack. You? What? Are you a little dyslexic? Did I, re- did I not you read it? You said CFOR. Oh. Yeah, I am. <laughs> <laughs> CFRO, folks. CFRO. <laughs> Undiagnosed, but we just found out. Yeah, it was, <laughs> what that was about. <laughs> uh, but it's good to have you uh, back in in the Lower Mainland and performing all around. I know uh, you were at Laugh Lines on Friday. Yeah. And then just, in Richmond Saturday. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I'm cooking up for uh, next weekend. I'm opening for a gym, uh, Jeffrey's. In, oh, uh, where's that? Save Our Foods Arena in Victoria. So. Oh, the old Memorial Arena. Is it? Awesome. Did they change its name? Yeah, now it's the Save on Foods Arena. It's well, the, actually the uh, Save on Foods Memorial Arena. Oh, there they we go. They knocked it down like 10 years ago plus and then rebuilt it. Yeah. So it's a memorial to Save on Foods? <laughs> well, you know. Something like that. It's appropriate with tomorrow and everything. <laughs> oh, we'll yes. That. There we go. You know what the opening show was there? Take a guess, guys. I, I'm derailing this, but I got well, How many years ago? Oh, this is like 13. Music Act? Yes. Um, Lady Gaga, Elton John, Rod Stewart. Oh, uh, you know the hair. God in Victoria, <laughs> yeah. can you imagine all the beige underwear? Well, yeah, I was the there. there were a you lot went? Of, oh, fucking right! I, sorry, uh, shooting right. I went. <laughs> Do you uh, think he's sexy? Oh yeah, the guy's amazing. Yeah. Anyone who plays with Jeff Beck gets me going. <laughs> and was Jeff Beck there? No. Well, it was just Rod Stewart. Well, and then the, you see what you did? That's just I went home and went to sleep. I didn't get going at no. all after that. <laughs> so you're opening for Jim Jeffries at Savon. That's great. You, have, you know him well. Yes, yes, from the London days. What, when Do you remember first meeting him? Yeah. Or seeing him? Yeah, it was at the, um, it, oh, what's it? Is it the Comedy Cafe? The one in Shoreditch. Yeah, he'd, he'd showed up. He looked like a rooster in a leather jacket. And, uh, <laughs> yeah, he's always a cocky dude. Uh, but, yeah, 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 we were doing like a like a pro-am night there. So he had no name at this point? What's that? He had no name? No, he just showed up from yeah. uh, Australia. He was working, um, he was doing comedy, but he was also selling phones or something. He was working in a phone shop. But mm-hmm. we got along really quickly. Yeah. yeah, a lot of us, we all we all found each other. Um, but that's the weird thing about it. Because um, he, he, he did a podcast with Burt Kreischer just a little while ago. And he just he was talking about his his best mates in comedy and and that he doesn't you know he doesn't see half of them anymore and he said my name um, and a guy I played hockey with in London was listening to the podcast and he 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 sent me the clip to say look they're talking about you mm. and I was like oh geez I haven't seen Jim in a long time that's really nice that he said something like yeah. that. And I was in Victoria playing hecklers, and I was driving past the um, the, the Save on Foods Arena, and this Jim's face came up, and I was like, "Well, what is going on? <laughs> what Jim's playing the Save on?" <laughs> so I shot him a shot him a message just because I had, you know, like it was in my head, and I was like, "Hey, you got an opener for that?" And he's like, "Yeah, why not? Come on." <laughs> that's, that's how it all came about. That's perfect. Yeah, yeah. Nice. Yeah, and that's because I like the whole weekend because I had I bought my wife and my kid and that that meant I had to bring my car, and the whole time I was like yeah, here for two days. I need to bring my stupid car. And it's it's, it's going to be hundred bucks back now too. And mm-hmm. It turned out all right. Yeah, and if yeah. I hadn't had the car, I wouldn't have drove past the arena. Yeah. I wouldn't. Um, what is it? It's all meant to be. Now, how many does that hold? Do you know, Sam? That's about, uh, for that show, it'll be probably 6,000. Yeah, that'll be my personal. Well, I did 6,000 at the Rod Laver Arena in, oh, yeah. um, in in Melbourne for the gala. That's when you were on the ATP tour. Yeah. yeah. Doubles, though. Right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, mixed doubles. Mixed doubles. <laughs> mixed doubles yeah. Until they found out my little secret. <laughs> <laughs> Um, I wasn't a guy. Yeah, see, I made it. I made it acceptable. Uh, no, it was for the Melbourne uh, Gala for the Melbourne Comedy Festival, and I went up and I just ripped it. I did. I did my AA stuff, 
And it, like I'd never played to a crowd that big, but yeah. if you do it right, the laughing waves and it goes it goes to the back and then it comes back and you're like you're you're an ego sailor. Like <laughs> it's just like this thought formulated in my head and now I've just seen six thousand people do an emotional wave back and forth and it was really just maybe the best ten minutes of my life. Wow. I just 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 ripped it, like absolutely ripped it. And I felt so bad because I was walking past, I was walking off stage just high as a kite and like on life. And then uh, Des Bishop, a very talented comedian, he had to go out and do his AA Save My Life material. <laughs> <laughs> Sabotaged him. Oh, I didn't know that was what he was going to do, but I, mean, I knew he didn't drink. But. Oh, that's funny. <coughs> oh, wow. and, and before going out, had you ever heard from other comics about a certain way of delivery that you need in those large venues that's different? No, I, I just, just figured figured it, it on myself. I mean, I'd been playing theaters uh, for different reasons uh, coming up to that. Um, but it's why... Like, I used to have a really sort of laid back style and quiet, but, um, it was, it was, do, it was from doing bigger gigs. You just go, well, you know, you gotta, some nights you gotta be able to throw your back into it too. But the, I mean, that's the thing though. Once you get into, um, get better, better sound systems, uh, you don't need to be as loud. Mm -hmm. uh, Cause that's why I've, I've got throat nodules now that I have to be really careful with. They, they use, they're fine if I don't drink or stay up all night shouting afterwards. It's not so the gigs that'll hurt them. So they're never fine. Yeah, no, I, no, I'm a good boy now. <laughs> okay. I tell you, uh, I'm, uh, I'm up, but I'm reading. <laughs> you certainly uh, cleaned yourself up. I went to Kevin Fox's uh, benefit for the hurricane in the Bahamas, and I walked in and said hi to some comics, and I had a double take and looked at you. Oh, Glenn, I didn't even realize it was you. You had a jacket on. And, I know. Yeah, yeah. Well, we're all getting older. Get know. responsible. Mm. Oh, that was that was the night... Um, that was the day after those guys had turned, tried to run my wife over too. So oh, I was, uh, uh, yeah, I just had to. Um, I, I didn't even stay there for the end of the gig. I had to go home and, and tell her all the good things about Canada. <laughs> Share pictures of moose. And <laughs> oh man, I feel bad. I feel bad as a Canadian well, representative. Yeah, you know it's funny. A lot of um, a, a lot of Canadians do. Um, I, I, the, the, almost everybody's heard it has taken it personally and they've yeah. gone, well, that's, that's Surrey and I, I, yeah, I don't They're probably British tourists. Yeah. <laughs> Hooligans <laughs> here to watch the white caps. <laughs> yeah. 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 I don't know. What are you going to do? I mean, it, it, uh, it, it bothered me deeply and, like, yeah. from where they were coming from, too, it's a it's a welfare office. It's a it's like um, yeah, it's like because she showed me how it happened, and that's that's what what those guys would have been doing. It was a Wednesday. It was a welfare office. So these two dudes, uh, apparently white guys, dressed like gangster rappers. So you know, like I already didn't like them just from the description. Yeah. Uh, and it just like you know that sort of thing like you know that's such a heinous crime it doesn't even have a name like 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 motion and gun or whatever you know mm -hmm. what they did like a trick a trick yeah. and then a murder attempt and I'm just like what are you mad about like why are you you, you know you you're a couple of white guys in Canada dressing up like a Just trying oppressed. to scare her, maybe? No, like, if they were trying to scare her, but they ended up in the wrong lane. Like, they they, they turned towards her. That is crazy. Yeah, yeah. And, you know, like, everybody's got their things, but, you know, they've, they've picked up their free money. <laughs> from the government, you know, they're, they're dressed go, uh, up. They're dressed up like somebody has been oppressed by the police, like you know. But they haven't. They they're just like, yeah, we're the bad boys, and oh, there's a young mother. Just Crazy. The worst. The worst. Um, 
the worst kind of human you could you could imagine. So you have been to you say about seventy countries. You must have had some scary countries you've been to. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But uh, you forget, like it's, uh, yeah. I I don't I I don't know if I've seen one sort of degrade as fast as uh, parts of Canada has from from my memory of what it was like when I was young. Well, we all have an idyllic memory of our childhood. I, I was just saying uh, yesterday, the other day, to my wife who grew up in the Maritimes. Oh, you know, when I was a kid in, in New Brunswick, people would come over to your house, you know, ring the doorbell. But they don't do that out here. And I said, no, when I was a kid, they did that out here. <laughs> it's just what, that age when we were... You know, yeah. 30, 40 years ago, uh, that's what people were doing anywhere. Yeah. But we tend to think of our childhood as, you know, I mean, it was a safer time all over the world. So I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, and and it's not, yeah, it's not, ju- it's not just Canada that has these problems. But mm-hmm. I mean, I'm, I remember when I first started going to America, the south of America has some real problems like... Uh, I saw some poor people down there. They like, like their their poor people are the most defeated poor people I've ever seen in my life. Like I've seen poor people in India, but they're still big smiles and and not, you know like life isn't kicking them, you know. Mm-hmm. But I just some of the poor people I saw in the southern states like just just a, like a face like a death mask. Uh, so yeah, America's America's keeping up with Canada in the uh, <laughs> keeping up with. Come on, yeah. they're setting the pace. Yes, they can, are. Can you think of uh, the scariest place you ever went? Uh, there was a time in Vietnam. I was taking a taxi from Vietnam to Cambodia, where uh, it was unclear whether or not we were kidnapped, and uh, oh, I was with. Um, I was with uh, my girlfriend at the time and Kevin, Kevin J. I don't know if you've seen him on Netflix. He's... Um, That's familiar. Yeah, he's from um, Malaysia. He's an Indian, Indian Malay, I think. Um, but, uh, yeah, he, he's got a Netflix special now. He didn't have the time. Uh, but even he, like, he was in the cab with me and he was like, guys, I'm, I'm from Asia and I'm, I, I, this has never happened to me either. So if you, if you're just thinking like, mm. this is okay, it's not, but, cause they kept switching drivers of the cab. Uh, and the guy, the guy kept pulling over and, um, and looking in the trunk <laughs> and then he would stop and he would run into bars and then run out. And, uh, yeah, for the longest time, we were just like, it was such odd behavior. We thought, well, okay, well, we're probably kidnapped right now. And we're going to, and then it, ter- it turned out, um, the v- initial switch of the driver was because the one guy didn't know where we were going in Cambodia. Uh, and the other guys, the other reason that they kept, stopping he was delivering packages he was also a courier <laughs> and uh <laughs> the third reason he kept looking in the trunk is because there's uh, a dead body <laughs> no it had to do with a spare tire and one of the tires was low but the other one had a leak and he had to look and see if he needed to change the tire but he had to and that, like, he kept he kept pulling over and weighing it up in his mind whether or not to do it. But to us, it just looked. <laughs> like, yeah, I know, very suspicious. Yeah, and then we got to we got to Pen on Pen, and the guy, um, the guy who books the gig, Dan Riley, um, he like he was just driving around in Pen on Pen, and just did like there was there was one thing that, like there's one big sort of. Um, roundabout with this huge structure and it's on all the postcards it's the most famous thing in the city and he didn't know how to find it <laughs> and then we called uh, Dan who was waiting at the thing and it directed him in but then uh, it, we pulled up and Dan like ran across the street and he pu- he opened the, 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 the driver's door and he sat 
like on the lap of the taxi driver. <laughs> I was like, what are you doing? I was trying to like tell him. Like, I, I thought he'd done the thing that I sometimes do is get in the wrong side because you're yeah. not used to what side people are driving on. But no, that's just a flat out thing they do. If there's no seats available, you just sit in the, you sit in the driver's lap. I go lap. for a ride. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, made it to the hotel, but Whoa. for a day we had been kidnapped. Well, yeah, like how about just some communication? He could have, if he could speak English, tell no, you. Speak English. Oh, yeah. Speak English I just have all. to drop this off. I've got to check the tire. Everything's yeah. fine instead of living in fear for you for uh, yeah. the duration. Uh, yeah. <laughs> the Hey, uh, you were on in 2011, so I didn't know it because I didn't watch it then. And you were a guest here with me in 2011 and 2015. But I only saw within the last year, year and a half maybe, Paul Provenza's Green Room. Ah, And there's only two seasons. Like, why didn't this go on forever and ever? (laughs) And your episode was maybe one of the best. Oh, thank Uh, you. It was uh, you, Richard Belzer, (laughs) Janine Garofalo, Dave Attell, Doug Stanhope. Yeah. Pretty good lineup. Yeah. And Paul Provenza, of course, hosting. I know. (laughs) Is Richard Belzer that much of a prick in real life? He was all right, actually. I, I liked him. Okay, uh, that's but good. he was very odd. Like, he oh, was, yeah. Uh, yeah uh, Proop said uh, he had uh, all the affectations of a Dutch count. <laughs> <laughs> he was smoking a pipe, yeah. had a tiny little dog. And Perfect a- description. <laughs> and coming from Proops, <laughs> the affectations. Yeah, I know. Yeah. Yeah. Proops is like, that's weird. <laughs> oh, man. It was, uh, that was a crazy night. Um, Prevents a. He made a mistake off the bat because he he filmed two episodes that day, uh, and uh, he uh, the first episode was about marijuana and comedy, and he bought, had all these guys that really liked weed on, and they were just fucking the whole place stank. <laughs> And then he had an hour to turn it over and then do ours. But, of course, he's still high. Right. So I was like, you fucking <laughs> pothead. You're the only – put your pot one at the end. Don't, don't do that one first. Unless, you know how it works. Unless so, your second yeah. one is Doritos and comedy. <laughs> <laughs> so – it was already like he got up. He got up in the middle of the recording, and t- I don't know where he went. But there was there's there's some parts where he's not there because he just like he pulled a whitey and fucked off. <laughs> but he he pissed me off a bit on that one because I just kept trying to ask him what the what the show was about, and they were like, "It's got no there's Glenn there's." It's it's just flat whatever whatever comes to his mind and then he he showed up he was he had a t shirt with um a dead commit Robert Schimmel is he dead yeah, I think it yep. was Schimmel yeah, yeah, yeah yeah and it was about death and comedy and I was like well you have a t shirt made up obviously you knew at some point you didn't just pull out your Robert Schimmel t shirt and go you know what let's talk about this <laughs> I got I got the shirt out why not. And, yeah, I mean, it was fun. But the, the other thing, too, it made me do that bit that I hadn't done in six years about retarded porn. And um, <laughs> that was, that like, to me, and you wouldn't let it drop. And then I had to do a bit. Yeah. Because it's, the show is called The Green Room. And it's conversation. Guys. Yeah, but it's Sitting also, yeah, talking, it's called yeah. The Green Room. And it's like, yeah, Glenn, do your bit. Because that's exactly what I would have done <laughs> if I had been in a green room with Stan Hope and Attel. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> hey, guys. Check out this Do you want to hear my closer from five years ago? <laughs> <laughs> you got to tell to laugh with it, though, right? Like, yeah, yeah, I was amazed. I was amazed that it came out of my head. Like, I hadn't done that bit for for years and years. And that that was the bit that uh, a few years later, I was in San Francisco waiting in line for... Um, uh, I was doing that um, Durst outdoor show in the park. Like, it's like a free show. Mm-hmm. And... Um, Every year, the special guest, Robin Williams, every year is like a secret, but everybody knows it's going to be Robin Williams. San Francisco. Yeah. It's got to be. So I'm backstage waiting in line for the buffet 
with all these other comics. Robin Williams shows up, and all of a sudden, I'm the only one in line for the for the tacos. And I'm like in my head, I'm like, I don't care, Robert Williams, and Mork <laughs> from Mork. I don't, I'll get myself a chimichanga here. And he broke through the crowd, like he saw me, and he like he came right up to me and he said, "Glenn Wool, you're a very funny man." Wow. And uh, I was luckily wearing sunglasses at the time. So I looked like the coolest dude in the world because my eyes were like saucers, but <laughs> I got sunglasses on. I'm just like, what? 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 <laughs> yeah, and he'd seen that episode of um, ah. of The Green Room and was quoting back the material to me oh. and uh, was, we hung out for a bit. And he was a really, really good dude. And then I sent my parents an email to tell them what happened. Because they know, because a lot of the times they don't know who they like. If I can say, Oh, you know, Doug yeah. Stanhope and me were having, <laughs> Oh, good. Was, was he your laundry repairman? Or, <laughs> uh, but they know. And my mom read the email out to my dad across the room. And uh, she used to have this lady named Mina that came and helped clean the house from, with my mom, you know, like just on mm -hmm. Tuesdays kind of thing. We don't have a maid. We just, you know. Um, it was a party, a cleaning party. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, and in the middle of that, she read it out, and Mina was just sort of like scrubbing something on the floor, and she just went, oh, Robin, he's wonderful. <laughs> and she had lived in Terrace when he'd shot a movie up there, and uh, <laughs> and they, yeah, he'd apparently <laughs> delighted the whole town wow. for, for a month or two and just being cooler than... Any of the other movie stars. I just thought that's a wonderful, wonderful. You know, you're a good person if like all those things are yeah. happening. Like yeah. the son contacts the parents, and oh, then yeah. the lady's like, "Oh no, he's really good." <laughs> yeah. It was so that Mina was her name. Yeah, because she sounded a lot like Nathan Lane there. That was yeah. Uh, any relation? Well, we actually <laughs> found out later that it was it was Nathan actually Lane. Nathan Lane. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> He was uh, shooting a different kind of movie up there. Yeah, yeah. He was just getting into a role, I guess. Deep cover. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Meisner method, right? Yeah, Robin Williams was, by all accounts, a great guy. It makes me feel bad for giving him a bad review once. Did there you? Oh, yeah. Okay. This is Glenn Wool, and you're listening to What's So Funny on CFROX, the oh. nice. Rockin' 100.5 FM Vancouver Co-op Radio! So close! <laughs> C-F-R-O-X! Thank you. C-F-R-O-X! Uh. Oh, man! <laughs> so, Glenn, I glad gotta, I gotta say something. I remember the first time I uh, heard of you was when you were on a podcast... Uh, uh, talking shit with Jim Jeffries and Eddie If just like five, six years ago in L.A. when you were down there. Yeah, and they used to have a podcast they did, together. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, I remember uh, hearing that, like, holy shit, that was great. And then you came and played Hecklers, and I bought your CD you had on sale then. And it was one of the coolest experiences of my life was to meet a guy on a podcast that I had listened to. And really? so you're pretty cool. Oh, right. Yeah, wow. and then I realized that everyone has a podcast. But, yeah. <laughs> you know, it took me a while. Back then, they didn't. No, they didn't. Yeah. Yeah. You must have to apply to the government to have one of those. <laughs> yeah, what the hell's that going much on? access uh, to human I'm, ears? I'm not on TV. <laughs> no way. You mentioned Will Durst, who had a heart attack recently. I know. And did. how's he doing? Do you know? I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> um, I'd imagine we'd have heard if it uh, if it had uh, gone the, the way that we don't want it to go. Right, uh, yeah. Uh, he's really underrated. I always liked Will Durst. Uh, yeah. And, and a political comic, but not not so, you know, preachy. No. Just very funny. Yeah. yeah I liked him a lot. I dropped him in it in Edinburgh once. I was, I was MCing. I dropped him in it in uh -huh. Edinburgh once. I was MCing at Late and Live. And, uh, I, or no, I was just doing a set. But he was up next, and I did about 20 anti-American stuff, and it was really working <laughs> like these Scots were drunk and howling along to, to, the, to the thought of it. And, uh, you know, it's a hard gig. 
and when it, but when it goes off, it goes off well. And I just remember coming off, and there's Durst standing in the sidelines, <laughs> just eye contact. <laughs> Sorry, man. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, I'm sure the MC will do a little time. Well, well let's get your next performer on stage from America. And that's why I always saw it because then um, he had me back in the in the thing in San Francisco. This was that was after that had happened, and I thought, oh, here we go. He's gonna <laughs> pay no, back time. No, just really, really sweet intro. Great guy. Didn't didn't <laughs> you know? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so you've worked with and hung with a lot of uh, the greats over the last. And how long wow, have you been doing no, this? They've they've hung with me. Let's let's get yeah. Them in I the mean, right but order. you're all in a group together, uh, yeah. right? Like like a green room. All these green rooms, or you meeting uh, Jeffries when he just at a kind of an open mic situation. Yeah, oh yeah. like that. Yeah. yeah, because you started here ninety what five. Four, three, two, one. Uh, I Where, think ninety three. Ninety three, yeah. and that was uh, start. And you were here for about three years. Yeah. So you were. Was it Fox? Was he around then? Tim Nutt. Yeah. Was it? Yeah. Chuck me Byrne? and Nutt. Was, me and Nutt started, I believe, within a month of each other, and then Chuck came by a few months later. But yeah, we were. We were the. Um, and yeah, Foxy too. I remember him starting. Um, it's amazing. Like uh, there was a very, there's been a very strong pedigree of comedian come out of Vancouver. Yeah, uh, yeah. sadly not not um, not saluted by um, by Vancouver as much as it could have been. You know, if we'd been bands, they, they'd all be. But you know, <laughs> yeah. everybody left. I guess. But, yeah, Tim is in Kamloops or yeah. around there. Chuck is in Toronto. Yeah, uh, Kevin's still here. Saw him at Laugh Lines yesterday. Oh, cool! Yeah, yeah, yeah. It, was, it was good. Yeah, he's great. Yeah, so it was a fun time back then. It's just starting out, right? Was yeah. it like? Oh yeah, yeah. I mean, you forgot too. The stage was here, and uh, Campbell and um, Craig. Uh, yeah, well, Craig had uh, had left. Colin, you're talking Colin. Colin wasn't here then. No, Craig. Yeah, Craig. Yeah, Craig, Craig Campbell. Yeah, yeah. I was just thinking about who else was hanging around. It wasn't yeah. just us. The, those yeah, guys. Yeah, yeah. Was... And Craig now is in England. Craig's in England. And how's Craig doing? He's been with us here before. I think he's all right. He's, he's, he's been making outbursts on Facebook I know. And I see that. I go. <laughs> it's enough that uh, every time I see somebody, they ask me how he's doing. <laughs> um, uh yeah, I mean he's got he's got his point of view, and uh, mm-hmm. I I will say this: I did see him in uh, Edinburgh. Um, me, him, and Stuart Francis all went out for dinner together, and he didn't ha- he wasn't making any outbursts. <laughs> he, People are much more reasonable in person. Yeah, he's not, he doesn't talk like that in real <laughs> life. <laughs> <laughs> and Stuart Francis, one of my favorites. Yes. Oh, he's so yeah. funny. But he keeps retiring. I think this one is going to stick. So he is retired now? It felt like it. it felt. I think his last gig was coming up at the Apollo in uh, England. But his last gig in Canada, it totally was his last gig. Because he talked about it over dinner. He... He added, um, like, a, there was a Sunday show. He, he was doing his last weekend in Toronto at, uh, at Yucks, and they added a Sunday show. Or there, Anyway, his last show ever in Canada, Canadian comedy legend. Well, like, comedy legend, like, you know, internationally famous. And there's about 20 people in for the wing night. Didn't even know who he was. I know. It's so sad. <laughs> So sad. I, I remember when I reviewed him before he moved to England, and so but he had already been a, a working professional, already hosted that game show in Toronto. You bet your ass. You bet your ass. That's the name of it. And uh, I reviewed him well into his career, and he said, "That's the first review I've ever had <laughs> here in Vancouver." And he's, he of course, was a Toronto guy. Yeah. One review <laughs> in his 20 years performing in Canada before moving to England. <laughs> oh, that's too bad. Yeah. Uh, well, we got some reviews because we did Lumberjacks in yeah. Edinburgh. We, we did. That's always difficult. It's, um, 
Yeah, one of them, because I was just sort of a tag on to that. And I, what, the, a reviewer took a shine to me. Mm. Uh, and uh, yeah, it caused some friction in the camp. <laughs> oh, really? <laughs> yeah. Because they, they thought, who? I know, I know. But because I'd, I'd been, I was emceeing, so I was spritzing. So it was, um, they just caught me on a good night. Ah. <laughs> you know, and they're like, but the real star of the show. And they, you know, it's some student rag, but <laughs> we were, you know, we were all pretty new to the Edinburgh <laughs> Fest. So every letter that had been printed, you know. Last time, I, I can't remember if it was talking with you or talking with Stuart that you guys were going to perform at Everest, but did that ever happen? No, it no, didn't that, happen. that, uh, some other comedians, um, did it in the end, but uh, there was a myriad of reasons why uh, we weren't able to complete that uh, that um, yeah, Mount Everest, I should say. Yeah, or, or first name basis. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> I did do one show for him at a a trade fair for mountaineering equipment. <laughs> <laughs> and there was it was. Um, the booth we had, because he, he said, like, oh, it'll be, like, away from everything. And Who's he? The guy who books, the guy okay, who was yeah, booking. Yeah. He goes, it'll be away from everything, and it'll be in its own, like, performance space. Uh, so it won't be like a, like a, like just you doing a presentation, you know, like a trade fair, like just, yeah. and I got there. <laughs> the and speech. Yeah. <laughs> And it wasn't away from everything. It was beside the the snapomatic fishermizer <laughs> and the <laughs> and we were doing this. Uh, it was the, the booth we had had these pictures of the Swiss Alps because it was a skiing town that was trying to push its um, its its. Uh, town on hikers for the summer. They're trying to get tourists to come there for the summer. So it was this beautiful mountainscape, and there was uh, backstage. There was a, a teenage boy in a in a goat costume or something, you know, trying to hand out flyers for. Okay. And uh, and I'm the I'm the comedian in the backstage, and he's sort of looking up to me like, oh, here's a big guy, you know, and he's back happy, and I'm like, you know, uh, when I was your age, I was actually a mascot for the radio station in Vancouver called Sea Fox. I was <laughs> the Sea Fox Fox, and, you know, I, I know, I, at the time, I thought, you know, maybe it's not going so good, but, you know, you, you persevere, maybe you can be like me one day, the big comedian here. I still thought it was going to be a good gig, and so in some part of my head, I thought, oh, this will work out. Uh, <laughs> and then I got out there, and there was like seven people, and like, uh, it just spread out. There, there was one guy. You had to do your time. Yeah, well, I had five minutes to do. Like, okay. He just wanted me to do five, and then he was going to do his presentation. There was one guy, I swear he had suffered or was suffering from the bends. I just, like, he ha he looked like he was from another dimension, kind of like. <laughs> and it would make sense in that there would be diving equipment at this trade show. For, <laughs> and, like, he was at the back, and there was all these... Different people, and it was horrible. Like, five minutes seemed like a long time <laughs> in the end. And I remember at the four-and-a-half-minute mark just looking at this mountainscape on all the walls and wishing that I was in the goat costume. <laughs> <laughs> My takeaway from that is you were the Sea Fox Fox? Yes, I was. You were. I was. I was one of them. Yeah, I of was. course. You weren't the... not just one. <laughs> But yeah, I got fired from that. Oh, for what? Uh, we stole the suit. We stole <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, man. Yeah, we stole the suit because um, my buddy, he had a he, – he was the one who got me into it. And he had it overnight at his place because he was supposed to go in the morning to, like, an event. And then we all got drunk and we took it out. Onto the highway, <laughs> we got. We were. 
So one of us was like in the suit, just on the highway, and people were pulling over, like, "Ah, Mr. Fox!" <laughs> <laughs> my buddy got in the car with the lady, and she's so excited. <laughs> she's driving along. She's like, "And this is on like the Trans Canada Highway on the way to Hope," <laughs> and she's like, "So what have I won?" <laughs> My buddy's just slowly turning the head at her. <laughs> and she's driving along. And so she's just slowly slowed down onto the verge. She goes, I think you should leave. Yeah. <laughs> wow. Did they tell you how many calls of complaint they got? <laughs> like, they I didn't win anything. Yeah. So oh, there was a few. Me. Oh, oh yeah. we did one. We Because there was about five of us. One of them. Uh, we were in the bushes by the highway and Mr. Fox ran out and then the rest of us were in our underwear and we ran out chasing him. <laughs> like that. Just to, like, what's, what's happened what? there? And a guy pulled over in a truck and he looked at the whole thing and he just went, kick his ass! <laughs> and then pulled the, hit the wheels and, <laughs> They can't fire you for stealing the the fox costume because then you have the fox costume. You've never been fired. You you could still be the fox anytime you want to be. Well, no, we we, yeah, we, did, we, did, we don't still have it. I oh, that would have been cool. Yeah. You could be <laughs> our mascot. Here, you added an X to our station name probably from <laughs> out of habit. CF Rocks. Was Fox. That, was but do you know what they did? They... Because there was there was other incidents before they were trying to get me to quit, um, but I wouldn't do it. But they <laughs> they'll do they'll do things. They'll send you to like terrible gigs and try and get you to like the one time they made a guy go to the Metallica concert <laughs> dressed up like the Fox, <laughs> and apparently uh, just the head ended up in the mosh pit. <laughs> <laughs> Headless Fox. <laughs> Decapitated. Oh, man. Yeah, oh. I got punched in the back of the head in that Fox outfit so hard. I still have like a... At, at a rock venue? No, at a, at a high school. They sent me to a high school for some reason. And you were 18, you say? No, oh, I would have been a bit older than that. Is that like your last real job? I think so. Yeah, because you have a Ah, uh, you know what? I remember I got fired now. That wasn't wasn't because we stole it, because that wasn't technically on my shift. <laughs> um okay. I used to, um, there used to be a one where you, you had to walk up Robson and Granville just shaking hands and, uh -huh. and being Mr. Fox. And I used to just go in from business to business, like like bar to bar and go get the helper to go, hey, can Mr. Fox go in your, in your staff room and take the head off? It's really hot. And they would, and they'd always bring you beer. Like just go, hey, you want a beer? Like that. So I was getting drunk in this fox outfit. And uh, then we went into this one bar, and uh, they, we, were, we were just partying in the bar. And uh, the dude's like, he looked at me, and he go, he's, the bartender had, a, had a, a Jack Daniels bottle and, a, like, the Coke gun. And he's like, he looked he like that, and I give him the thing, and he put it. He was straight pouring into this pint glass, and I had like a straw in the in the thing, and I was just drinking, and he was pouring, and I was managing to drink to keep from. So I was I was just wow. full of liquor in this fox outfit, and then it was one of these ones. It was a it was a bar, and then a restaurant. And I looked over and I saw my boss, oh, like no. the lady who. Yeah. So I was like. I hid behind the bar, so now I'm trying to act inconspicuous in a fox <laughs> outfit. Head's I'm like, head yeah, give me, give me a hat. Yeah. I'll, uh, I'll just sort of sunglasses. <laughs> yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll walk out oh, of here. Man. Uh, yeah, I'm trying to. So I'm crawling out of a bar dressed like a fox, uh, and I made it to the door, and it was fine. I, th I think I'd gotten away with it, but I walked out. 
and、um, there was a Japanese film festival on, and there was a whole lineup full of young Japanese people waiting to get into whatever piece of cinema was offered. And、Uh-oh. the thought of a mascot just blew their <laughs> minds, and it was like I'd walked. Out, it was like I was the Beatles. <laughs> oh, <laughs> wow. was、really、like, <laughs> down, and I got mobbed by all these. Little、wow! Japanese teenagers. <laughs> I was, I was like,、wasted. "Get out of my way!" Wow! <laughs> famous a famous a trap. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that was let go after that. Oh, the good old days, Glenn. Well, thanks for Thank、uh, you. your stories and coming by. And I, I was excited that you'd be living here forever. But that's not, not to be, be. unless be. Brexit really, really screws up, and then I'll stay.、But、All right. Well, it's a chance. Come back anytime.、Uh, three times a charm. Next week, our guest will be Daniel Chai.、Uh, the twenty fourth will be Steve Shooter McGowan. Ah,、oh, nice. And、uh, December first will be Bridget May. So we got、uh, guests lined up for the next three weeks. Thanks, Glenn. Thank you. And Sam, guy, both of you. Go nurse your colds.、Get、I'm gonna、better. go look at where my car was. <laughs> Hope it's still there. <laughs> Good night.